Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Courtney Ryan, and today I'm gonna to be reacting to some TikToks. I've been tagged in a lot of these. People have DM'd them to me, emailed some of these my producer found or I found on my own. Um, so we're really all over the map here today, but nonetheless, I think it's always enlightening and entertaining um, to get you know a more healthy, more mature approach to some of these train wreck TikTok videos. So let's get started. When you go through all his following list and check every girl's page to see if he has liked her pictures. Let me tell you something, guys. Every girl does this. I've never met a girl in my life that doesn't. If you uh, are a girl that has never done this, let me know down in the comments. But I would say 98% of girls do this, have done this, will do this. Social media just has made it too easy to see everything that people are doing. While I think that there are positives to social media, there are also a ton of negatives. One being, you can hurt your feelings really easily, right? You can creep on your ex and his new girlfriend. You can creep on your current boyfriend and his ex and all the lovey-dovey stuff they used to post about each other. And you can just send yourself into a spiral. You feel crazy. You feel like an FBI detective and you're somehow on his cousin's page and you're going, I mean, it's a wormhole. You get yourself in, you can't stop, it's rough. It makes you feel like maybe you should have been an FBI detective instead of working in accounting. I mean, seriously, these girls are next level. They can find out anything. So my advice to all of you guys watching, don't be following a ton of half-naked girls or Instagram models or girls that you're liking all their photos and just be respectful of your relationship because she's gonna see it, she's gonna find out, you're gonna be in the doghouse. It's not gonna be a good time, but also it's disrespectful if you have a girlfriend to be liking a bunch of pictures of other girls or half naked girls or following them or whatever it is. And it's okay to think other women are attractive. I'm not saying you should only think your girlfriend is attractive. We're humans, we're allowed to think people are attractive. I think people are attractive, my boyfriend thinks people are attractive. That's just how life is, it's fine. But when you act on it and you cross that line, that's when it becomes a problem and giving someone validation that you're not dating not a good thing if you have a girlfriend if you're single you do you but if you have a girlfriend I'm telling you example a she's going to see it she's going to find out she's not going to be happy you get in trouble not good things not good you heard it here first fucking with a pretty girl should be an honor to some men like you're the only one that I want but don't get it twisted you're not the only one that wants me um, okay, there's a little bit to unpack there. Number one, I don't think anyone should feel entitled to someone's attention or time. If I were you guys and I saw that video, it would kind of be a red flag to me, just that she's outwardly saying like, it's a privilege to talk to me, da da da. On the other hand, I can see what she's saying because I do think women have a lot more options than most men do. And it's much easier for women to get attention or talk to people than maybe it is for a lot of men. I mean, there's like 80% of women going for the top 20% or 10% of men on dating apps. I think there's a video that I'm gonna show you guys um, that kind of does a little deep dive into that. But yeah, ugh, I don't know if I'd wanna be with someone that was like holding over my head how many guys they could talk to instead of me. I don't know about that. Let me know what you guys think. <laughs> She said, when I post a selfie on my story because my love language is reassurance and when I don't get it from one place, I'll naturally look for it in another. Yeah, I think a lot of people have become addicted to the constant validation and attention online. And I've seen this affect a lot of relationships because say, you know, things aren't going that well in your relationship. Maybe your partner isn't giving you the attention that you want or that you need. And it's so easy to just post a photo of yourself on your story and get that validation and attention from thousands of other people. And it creates a lot of problems that haven't always been, you know, necessarily the case because social media wasn't always a thing. But having access to everyone at your fingertips, having access to the constant validation, attention, posting a photo on Instagram and getting a thousand likes, I mean, people become addicted to that. And it's all fun and games and it's a joke, but until it's not. And no amount of attention or validation from your partner feels like enough because you're so used to getting it from hundreds of people online in a matter of minutes. So it's something to kind of keep in check, to keep your eye on. Uh, 
you know, as a woman, I think women naturally get a little bit more attention than men do online. I mean, if you look at any girl's Instagram account, you can kind of see that. I do think it's something that is going to be affecting us mentally long term and is going to be kind of detrimental to not only the way people view themselves but their relationships and you know what that dynamic kind of looks like because they're so used to getting that validation and attention from outside sources and honestly outsourcing their happiness i think a lot of people rely on that external validation for their happiness and fulfillment which never leads you down a good path and often causes a lot of issues. So if you're someone who struggles with this or you're dating a girl that does this, it's something to keep in mind because again, I think it can be really detrimental to not only that person, but also your relationship with them. Yeah, I want one of my old tips back from when I was toxic. So what I used to do, I don't do stuff like this anymore. What I would used to do is like, I would go to their house, right? And I would get, I would have either some underwear that's like either too big or too small, right? And I would plant them in like a weird spot, like between the bed and the wall or like all the way at the bottom of the sheets or something, you know, weird. And then I will find them and I will be like, hmm, wait and see how they react. And then you just freestyle from there. It's whatever you want to do. Oh, no. All right. Again, it's like the the pretending to be somewhere you're not thing like I talked about before. Why are you pretending? Why are you faking scenarios to try to create drama? If you have to do that with the person that you're dating, you don't trust them and you shouldn't be with them. It's kind of like snooping through their phone. If you get to the point where you have to like creep on them all the time or snoop through their phone when they're not looking or hack their phone or passwords or whatever, you just shouldn't be with them because one of the most important things in a relationship is trust and communication, which if you're snooping and you're getting to this level, clearly you don't have either one of those things. So that's one thing I wish I could go back and tell my younger self is Courtney, if you're at the point where you feel like you have to go through their phone, you gotta break up with them. It's over, it's done, it's done. And sometimes it is a you problem, but a lot of the times it's because that person has given you a reason. And also if it is a you problem, you have to fix that. Instead of just like acting crazy with your partner and snooping through their stuff all the time. That's not fair to them either. So, rough. I know something you don't. I know something you will never know. When my date had no idea I was gonna cut him off the second I got home because the way he scooted into the restaurant booth gave me the ick. I've seen so many of these ick videos. I'm sick of it. These ick videos are giving me the ick, guys. I can't do it anymore. I've said so many times, if you are constantly picking people apart, looking for all these little surface level, minuscule things that are wrong with them, you're clearly not happy with yourself. It's fine to have deal breakers, red flags, different story, but these icks that say nothing about this person most of the time, is just you being so picky and so hyper fixated on these little things because you are not confident in yourself and you pick apart yourself. That's what it is. And if you're constantly picking apart other people for their flaws, how can you ever accept your own? You're gonna be picking apart you and your partner and everyone forever. And it's gonna be miserable. And you have to learn to see past these little surface level things that do not matter. The way someone scooted into a booth. Maybe he had to go to the bathroom. Maybe his leg was numb. I don't know. <laughs> but also, it doesn't freaking matter. It's scooting into a booth. And I'm sure that this is a joke, just like half of these icks. But I think young, impressionable girls see this. And then next time they go out on a date with someone, they look at the way someone scooted into a booth. And they're like, ooh. Absolutely not. That girl on TikTok said that this is an ick and da, da, da. It's like, can we chill? Can we be like graceful with people a little bit? And again, icks are totally different than deal breakers and red flags. I don't want you guys to get that twisted. I think that those things are totally valid, but something so surface level and stupid as the way someone sneezes or the color of their sheets or the way they scoot into a booth, come on. Let's take some calls from the request line. Call number one. Oh, it's the same thing again when he starts acting up, but all it takes is one post on your snap story to fill the roster back up. Again, I think there's a lot of girls that have a lot of options, but I don't think I would necessarily want to be with someone who was holding that over my head or acting like the second I make a mistake or, you know, she thinks I'm not good enough. She's just going to go talk to a bunch of guys. And I would say the same thing to, you know, a girl. 
you shouldn't be with a guy who acts like he can get all these other girls and holds that over your head or makes you feel jealous or insecure about that. So just something to keep in mind. I know she didn't really do that here and this is probably again a joke like half the things on TikTok, but people take this stuff very seriously. Like young kids are on TikTok that see this. Even old school Call Her Daddy podcast, I used to feel like a psychopath after I listened to that. I think she's gotten a lot healthier. Her approach is a lot better now. But back in the day, she used to talk about having a full roster of guys and all this stuff. And I think it really messed a lot of women up in the way that they view how they should be interacting with men or you know, the way that they should be going about dating. And it's not always to have a backup person or a roster full of guys you could call at any given time if one of them drops off or one of them falls short, you know? Like, it's okay to be single. It's okay to not be talking to a bunch of different people at once. Do you wanna put all your eggs in one basket in the very beginning? Maybe not. But it gets to a point where you wanna just be talking to one person and like waiting for them to mess up or waiting for their flaws or waiting to pick them apart with the icks and the whatevers. I mean, you're just like setting yourself up for disappointment and disaster. But again, just generally here, women have so many options and all they have to do is post a story on their Instagram, a picture on their Snapchat, and so many guys will be messaging her. All right guys, that is all I have for this video. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to be in the loop for when I release new content. Again, I know that TikTok is entertaining sometimes, but I do think it's enlightening to see these things, to know what to maybe avoid when you're dating, maybe some things you should cut out of your life and stop doing. Um, and also just, you know, seeing things from a healthier, more mature point of view. I think we should all be striving for that. And I'm quite frankly tired of all the toxicity and crazy people. I don't know about you, let me know. But if you haven't already, be sure to follow me on Instagram at Courtney Christine Ryan. I love connecting with all of you guys on there as well. As always, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all next time.